Well, hello, Michael. Thank you for the time today. Hello, John. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. That's good. <laughs> uh, I'm excited to do this for our folks in London who uh, their only impression of Heffernan is me. So clearly we need to expand beyond that. So I appreciate you making the time and uh, just uh, answering a few questions and just giving people a feel for you and the company. Well, I hope they think some people at Heffernan actually have hair, John. So that'd be well, a good thing. We, so. we might we're over two on that one, but okay, we'll, yeah. we'll do it. I'll do a video with somebody else with hair. Okay. Um, but so I just had a couple of questions for you today to run through, and uh, we'll get started. So uh, just a, a nice softball. Um, can you just talk a little bit about how you ended up in the insurance business? Like a lot of people, at least that I know, uh, my father was in the insurance business and that's sort of how I started. But uh, I, I graduated from college and he had a work study program with Stuart Wrightson in, uh, in London, in the UK. So I uh, went to London and kind of was learned about the insurance business from Stuart Wrightson, went to Lloyd's, uh, worked at Lloyd's a little bit. Actually, I say I worked at Lloyd's, but I actually worked in a warehouse driving a forklift. That was my true working at Lloyd's. That was after I was trained at Stuart Wrightson. But I kind of got excited about the insurance business from London and from how, you know, with, you know, going and putting a slip together and seeing how everything was done um, in, in, in the London market. And so that excited me. And then I went back to the U.S. and got a job with Aetna Casualty and Surety, which was not anything like London. It was, uh, I was at desk number one. And if I got promoted, I went to desk number two and I got a garbage can. And if I went to desk number three, I had a, I got an ashtray or something like that. In those days they smoked at your desk. So, so it was quite interesting, but uh, you know, the whole United, you know, the London Lloyd's was one of the reasons why I went into the insurance business. All right. Good. I've always, I always like hearing that story. And uh, so what, like to date, what, what would you consider one of the most important lessons you've learned in the business over the years? Um, probably the most, you know, I, I think you've seen picture. I did have hair at one time. Uh, it actually was quite long. And I, and I pr pretty much thought that um, probably corporate America was corrupt at that point uh, in my life. But um, my father in the, was in the business and I've been in the business ever since then. And it's just, it's, I think the best lesson I learned was early on from my dad that you can be successful and not be corrupt at all. Uh, you can be, you can have high integrity, you can be very honest and you can actually do well that way. Some people don't, some people cheat and around the system, but others uh, who follow the rules and play the game the way it should be played can be successful. And that was probably the best lesson I ever learned because I, I always wanted to operate that way. I did not want to operate the other way. And if the only way to be successful was to operate the other way, I would not be a very happy person, so. Or oh, I, would got, I would I would have gotten out of the business actually. Yeah, well, yeah, well, we always have uh, that common motto of if you don't like your job, if you don't like it here, go somewhere and be happy. So That's we want right. people to be happy here. Uh, on the heels of that, I think I know what you're going to say on this question. But uh, um, what are if you thought of a one or two things you're most proud of with HIB with what's been created over the last thirty plus years? Yeah, what the, would that be? The the whole family nature of our company, the the culture. The culture is the most important thing, but how we give back and how we're, we're a big family are the two things that are probably the most important thing to me. I, I, I've always wanted to be an organization that gave back to the people who have less and, and our company does that all the time. All the employees embrace it, which is fantastic. Over 70% yeah. of our employees actually take some, put money out of their paycheck and put it into the foundation. So that's, that's unbelievable. And they participate in, in um, various activities of volunteering. And then just, you know, I always, one of my main comments when I talk about why, why do I think we're doing okay? A lot of mothers in our company uh, tell their children to come work for us. And I, I don't think any mom would tell their child to work somewhere where they didn't think it was a good place to work and they treated people fairly. So we have a big family of, besides the fact we act like a family, there is a lot of our family here, relatives, husbands, wives, kids, uncles, all that kind of stuff. All right. So what I know, what do you like, what do you love doing in your off time when you're not working? Um, I like to eat and drink, which I think, you know, um, <laughs> which I have not been able to do. Well, I'm still doing it, but it's costing me a lot less because I'm <laughs> buying, you know, I'm buying the wine I normally buy at a restaurant is a lot less expensive when you drink it at home. So, uh, 
But uh, you, you and run the, out of Heffernan wine, you're buying uh, wine. Yeah, I buy, I'm buying wine. Yes, and I and I <laughs> and I'm cooking my own meals, and they might actually taste better than the restaurant meals. But uh, I do like I like to eat. I like to I water ski, I play a little bit of golf. But I really like just being with family and friends, and and most a lot of my friends work here, um, and so I like you know breaking bread and having a good laugh and um, enjoying good wine and food. But I do like cooking as well. So. I miss that social. Uh, the dinners we have amongst everyone, the lunches, I miss that so much with the, just all our colleagues. It is yeah. uh, with COVID. Um, we have a lot of good memories over the many years, uh, all of us collectively in the company, but what, what's maybe one or two that just stand out as good memories over the, the long history we've had so far? There's really nothing specific. There's a lot of memories, but I think the most, what I really when I think back, what I've enjoyed the most is the various occasions where we all get together to celebrate having a good year, like at our reward event when we go to Lake Tahoe, our right. holiday party um, at the ballpark um, in San Francisco where the Giants play. We have an owner's weekend, uh, which I really like because the people that have stock in our company really believe in our company. And most of them have been here for a long time, 20 plus years, a lot of them. And uh, they're friends, they're colleagues. And I just to see people get together and really like each other and also like what we're doing and want to do it well. So I think that those events where I get to see that are definitely the, my best times, uh, the, the, my best memories as part of the company. Yeah. And uh, as respects our, uh, our crazy adventure across the pond in London, um, what, what is it that interests you about that and why the support? Well, I think um, obviously because I started out, I was in, London was an important aspect. So I'm kind of like going home. Uh, it's, uh, I, don't, I don't know, um, I, I, some of the people in the office might know David Rowland, who was, he, he, at the time he was the chairman of Stuart Wrightson. And um, I was, uh, I, I ended up staying in London a little bit longer for about two months waiting for my wife to come over for, we were going to travel. And I went into, I, David Rowland used to ask me about his son because I guess he had long hair and I sort of, I was getting longer hair again because I was growing it out in a beard and he wanted to know why I did that or whatever. And uh, so I thought he actually knew me. So when he became a, uh, when he I became a, a, a <laughs> whatever, whatever he became, he was knighted well, he was or something like Lloyd's, that. Chairman yeah, of Lloyd's. Yeah. And then he went to the Chairman of Lloyd's and I went to the event and right, I asked him right. and he didn't know who I was, but he did remember <laughs> Pauline Ritchie, who was his executive assistant, who was the person who I wish became right. friends with. So we kind of connected, but that was pretty funny. Yeah, was but uh, I guess I'm fun. going, so there's just a lot of memories. Um, we've done a lot of right. business with London uh, over the years with uh, various syndicates. You know, some of our church program was in London for many, many years, and we had a lot of trips over there. So I think just the whole, um, the market, I, I like the market. I also like diversity in our own company. We have a lot, you know, we have an MGA. We're involved in a wholesale or an outsourcing company. So revenue sources from different places is important to me to kind of keep the overall company healthy. So one thing can't really take it down. So that's interests me as well. Um, so there's, there's a lot of things. We're really excited about London. Hopefully it'll grow to uh, be a lot larger company in, in the UK. It will, I promise. All that's right. Well, we, Michael, that's what we want. <laughs> thanks, my friend. Really appreciate the time and uh, excited to share this with the folks in uh, London. And one of these days when uh, when the world's back to normal, we'll get you over there. Well, I want to be there. So hello, everyone. And uh, enjoy, enjoy yourselves and enjoy being part of uh, our organization. Great. Thanks, Hef. Take care. Bye.